The ocean surface hides everything beneath it. Below 200 meters, rules change. Light fades, pressure builds. We've charted Mars in detail, mapped distant star systems, yet less than 5% of our own ocean depths are explored. The moon's surface is better known than what exists 6,000 feet below us. At the surface, sunlight drives everything. Plankton blooms feed fish. Fish feed chains that stretch from coral walls to migrating whales. Standard biology. But descend past 200 meters and those rules dissolve. This is the twilight zone. It extends to one kilometer deep. Here, sun rays are too weak for photosynthesis. No plankton forests, no green foundations. Only particles drifting down from above, fragments of waste, flecks of the dead. Marine snow, scientists call it. Looks like nothing, means everything to what lives here. The twilight zone breeds strangeness. Many animals are transparent. Glass squid drift with barely visible organs. Glass octopuses vanish entirely, except for their eyes. Two dark points in clear flesh. Why transparency dominates here remains unresolved. Camouflage and faint light? Energy conservation when pigments cost more than they're worth? Both? Neither? Others choose the opposite. Not invisibility. Light. Bioluminescence. Chemical reactions that produce glow. To us it looks beautiful. Flashing patterns, glowing bodies like drifting lanterns. Here, it's survival code. Some use it to lure prey, some to find mates, some to disappear. Counter-illumination is the trick. From below, predators spot dark silhouettes against the dim shimmer above. So, firefly squid cover their bellies with onyx light-producing organs, matching the surface glow exactly. Their outline erases. They vanish by creating light to hide in light. The Bloody Belly Comb Jelly plays stranger games. It glows deep red. Red light never penetrates this deep, so the jelly appears pure black. Inside its stomach, bioluminescent prey gets concealed, hidden from predators that might detect its glow. Who can be seen? Who cannot? That's the question here. But the Twilight Zone holds more than optical tricks. Each night, billions of creatures rise. Lanternfish, squid, jellies, entire armies climbing toward the surface to feed on plankton under darkness. At dawn, they descend again, sinking back into gloom. This is the dial vertical migration, the largest synchronized migration on Earth, greater in numbers than all terrestrial herds combined. World War II sonar operators discovered it by accident. They detected a false seabed that rose every night, sank every morning, not the ocean floor, life, an invisible world moving as one. The twilight zone is where familiar rules start bending, where transparency becomes armor, where light serves to hide, where billions of animals rise and fall in rhythms older than our species. First layer of a world we cannot explain. Type continue to receive the next part. Past one kilometer, sunlight dies completely. The midnight zone, stretching down to 4,000 meters. No dawn here, no dusk only endless night. Temperatures hover near freezing. Pressure multiplies hundreds of times over surface conditions. Seems impossible for life. Evolution disagrees. The dragonfish produces red bioluminescence. To most deep sea eyes, red light is invisible. So the dragonfish's glow becomes a private searchlight. Illuminates prey without revealing itself. Its eyes are specially adapted to detect this hidden wavelength. A secret color seen only by itself. Other predators master disappearance differently. Some wear ultra-black skin so efficient at absorbing light, it reflects less than 0.5% of what touches it. Submarine spotlights hit them directly. They almost vanish anyway. Then there are anglerfish. Females dangle luminous lures in front of their mouths, drawing in prey. But reproduction is where true strangeness emerges. Males are born tiny, weak, helpless. Their only purpose, find a female nearly impossible in vast, dark ocean. When he succeeds, he latches on with specialized jaws. His body fuses into hers. His organs wither until he's little more than a sperm sac, permanently attached, nourished by her blood. One of the most extreme sexual adaptations in the animal kingdom. Not every creature here hunts, some wait. A whale carcass sinking to this depth becomes an oasis, feeds entire communities for decades. 
Yet even with submersibles, our knowledge remains fragmentary. For every documented species, scientists believe dozens remain unknown. Each dive uncovers creatures never before seen. Animals with glowing eyes, needle teeth, bodies so fragile they disintegrate when brought to the surface. Where light is weapon, where invisibility is survival, where even reproduction follows rules beyond imagination, type continue to receive the next part. Four kilometers down, we touch bottom, the abyssal plain. One of Earth's largest habitats covers more than half the planet's surface. Also, one of the least understood. No landmarks here, no reefs, kelp forests, or mountains. Only vast mud deserts stretching thousands of kilometers in every direction. Temperatures never rise above four degrees. Food is scarce. Survival demands strange strategies. Many animals here are giants compared to shallow water relatives. Giant isopods the size of puppies. Amphipods that can grow longer than a human hand. Even the colossal squid, among the largest invertebrates alive, prowls these depths. Deep sea gigantism. Why it occurs remains open mystery. Energy conservation? Better defense against scarce predators? We don't know. When giants from above fall, life gathers. A dead whale sinking to the abyssal plain becomes rare jackpot. Within hours, sharks, hagfish, amphipods. Then stranger arrivals, bone-eating Osidax worms colonize the skeleton, feeding on oils locked inside bones. Entire ecosystems spring up on a single carcass, last for decades until nothing remains but dust. The vampire squid, despite its name, isn't a predator. It collects drifting marine snow using long, sticky filaments, thrives in oxygen-starved depths using blood pigment with the highest oxygen affinity of any known cephalopod. In this desert of silt and silence, life moves slowly, creatures grow slowly, reproduce rarely, live for centuries. The Greenland shark may live over 400 years, longest lifespan of any known vertebrate. Time itself moves differently, yet, even the abyss isn't empty. Each sediment grain hides countless microbes. Recycling nutrients, sustaining a hidden food web, we're only beginning to map. The abyssal plains cover more territory than all forests, grasslands, and deserts combined. Remain largely unseen, unexplored, unexplained. Type continue to receive the next part. Beyond the abyssal plain lie trenches, carved by tectonic forces, Scars of the earth where one crustal plate slides beneath another, pulling the ocean floor down. The Hadal Zone, named after Hades, stretches from 6,000 meters to nearly 11,000 meters below the surface. If Mount Everest were dropped into the Mariana Trench, its peak would still be more than a mile underwater. Temperatures near freezing. Pressures exceed a thousand times surface levels, instantly fatal to human bodies. Yet, life thrives. Snailfish inhabit the very bottom, fragile, gelatinous, with translucent skin. They look too delicate to exist here, but they are the deepest living vertebrates ever discovered. Their bodies lack rigid bones. Cell structures are reinforced with unique molecules that keep proteins functioning under crushing pressure. Amphipods, shrimp-like crustaceans, swarm across the trench floor in huge numbers. Recent studies found plastic fibers inside their bodies. Even the most remote habitats are touched by human waste. The deep is not as isolated as we believed. At hydrothermal vents along trench walls, life takes stranger turns. Here, microbes feed not on sunlight or marine snow, but on chemicals spewing from Earth's crust. Hydrogen sulfide, methane, metals dissolved in superheated water. Entire communities of worms, clams, crabs depend on these microbes a food web based on chemistry, not photosynthesis. Life can exist in conditions utterly alien to the surface. This raises larger questions. If life adapts to such extremes here, could it exist on other worlds? Icy moons like Europa and Enceladus hide oceans beneath frozen crusts, warmed not by sunlight, but by internal heat. To study the hodl zone is to glimpse possibilities of extraterrestrial oceans. Yet, we know almost nothing about trenches. Fewer people have visited the Mariana Trench than have stood on the moon's surface. Each dive brings back creatures unknown to science. 
translucent sea cucumbers drifting like parachutes, gelatinous blobs with no clear anatomy, microbes whose metabolisms remain mysteries. For centuries, we imagined trenches as lifeless voids. What we found instead, resilience. Life that bends, reshapes, reinvents itself to endure the most extreme pressures imaginable. Type, continue, to receive the final part. More than 80% of the ocean remains unexplored. Each ROV expedition brings back creatures never before imagined. Transparent fish, glowing worms, jellies that break every biology rule. Discovery here isn't rare, it's constant. Even among known animals, so much remains unsolved. Why do so many deep sea creatures grow enormous? Giant isopods, colossal squid, amphipods the length of human hands. Why do others turn nearly invisible or cloak themselves in ultra black skin that absorbs almost all light? The greatest mystery may be bioluminescence. Nearly three quarters of deep sea life produces light. Yet the reasons vary wildly. Hunting, hiding, mating, simply surviving. We cannot explain how many species evolved such complex chemical systems, or why some glow in colors no other animal can see. Deeper puzzles remain. Why does deep sea gigantism occur? How do snailfish withstand pressures that would crush steel? What evolutionary paths led to anglerfish parasitic mating? How do hydrothermal vent communities sustain themselves in total chemical darkness? For now, mysteries without explanation. Perhaps that's what makes them powerful. They remind us Earth still holds secrets, secrets worth protecting, secrets worth discovering. The ocean covers 71% of our planet's surface. We've barely looked beneath it. What we've seen suggests we understand almost nothing about life's possibilities. The deep sea isn't a single environment, it's thousands. Each trench, each vent, each current pattern creates unique conditions, unique challenges, unique solutions. Every answer spawns new questions. That's the nature of the deep. Not an endpoint, but a beginning. Not a map territory, but an ongoing revelation. We know more about distant galaxies than the world beneath our feet. Maybe that's fitting. The ocean keeps its secrets, gives them up slowly, demands patience, technology, respect, and in return, it shows us life we never imagined possible.